this is Michelle Kane with Michelle Kane Actions and today I wanted to show you how you can remove unwanted objects from the background of your photographs and this is just one way to do it I'm sure there are others but this is just one particular way I'll show you today and on this photograph obviously this little motor contraption that's in the background here is really distracting and ugly and luckily I shot it with a shallow uh, enough depth of field that I've got a really blurry background which works perfectly in my favor to be able to remove this without really being able to notice that it was there in the first place. So the first thing you want to do is just duplicate your background layer and I'm just going to hit command J or control J on a PC and that gives me a new layer to work on so I'm not doing these effects on a background layer and uh, first thing I want to do is kind of zoom into that background there and right above this little motor there's just some really nice blurry green um, from the trees so I'm gonna start first of all with my clone stamp tool and that's just S on the keyboard and with the clone stamp tool if I just right click with my mouse I can see what kind of hardness I've got going on with the brush and so if I want a really hard brush I'm going to you know, take that all the way up to 100 and a really soft brush with soft edges, obviously zero. So I'm going to go somewhere about 40% here and I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. And I'm just using the bracket keys, left bracket key, right bracket key to make things bigger and smaller. And right here looks like a nice place to sample from. So I'm going to be sampling this area here and pasting it basically down over the top of this motor. So if I hit the Option or Alt key, I get a little target and that's showing me, yep, that's where I'm going to target from. So I'll click there and then I'll just begin to click down below. And if right there is the first sign that we've got a problem, it started to take in his uh, shirt. And so we want to undo that, Command or Control Z, and that undo undoes that. Um, and so I'll just Alt click again in the new location and start to paste and I'll click again and paste and so again when you've got these really blurry backgrounds it becomes super easy to paste things in and uh, cover things up and not make it look totally messed up so I'm just taking a little bit smaller brush and I'm just resampling a couple of times every time you see that little uh, target show up it just means I'm resampling so that I get a clean area to start from so I'm basically going to get in as close as I can to his body and then I'll begin to uh, clean things up a little bit more with a layer mask. So as I get into the lighter colors that are closer to him, I'm just going to sample from some of the lighter areas. I could even come up above here and sample from the, be the background behind his head here if I wanted to just for some new um, kind of colors and looks there. So as I get closer, my brush is just getting smaller and smaller. And as I get really close to him, I'm going to start actually pasting some of this stamped area over his shirt, or his skin actually, and his shirt, which is uh, not a huge problem because we'll just come in with a layer mask and clean that up. Now as I get closer, I also want to switch the opacity of this brush down a little bit. I've got it currently set to 60% and I'm going to drop that down to about 30% and that's just with hitting the three on my keyboard. I'm going to move some of this up a little bit and I'm sampling and just as I lower the opacity of my brush it just gets a little bit softer so I can kind of ease it in next to him. Now I've pretty much got everything cleaned up. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can look and see if I like it. Now it's kind of choppy looking down here and an easy way to fix that is to just come back in with a bigger brush and get a real low opacity brush of like 20 percent and I'm going to sample from up above here and just start to kind of smooth some of it out. So I'm just kind of painting some of these lines out of here just a little bit and that soft opacity brush helps me to achieve that without it looking really uh, harsh and fake. Oop, did it again, Command Z and we'll get some of that out of there. Now that the clone stamping is done, I want to zoom into the picture and see where any kind of overspray from the clone stamp tool got onto him or his shirt. And I can see that it is hazy here on the shirt. And these are just those details that you really want to kind of hone in on so that 
this uh, removal effect really looks real and doesn't look cheesy and fake. So what we're going to do is just come back to this duplicated layer that has all the clone stamping on it. There's before and here's after. And add a layer mask. So it's just this little add layer mask icon at the bottom. And now with a black brush on that layer mask, I'm going to get about an 80% opacity brush. And I might make sure that hardness is amped up just a little bit to 40%. And I'll probably um, change that kind of as I go. I'm just going to come along his shirt. And basically what I'm doing is covering up the clone stamping that got sprayed on here. And I can make that brush a little harder as I go to the edges so that I can really get a fine uh, paint in. And nothing sprays over into the background. So as long as you are careful with your clone stamping as you go along, you won't have a lot of this cleanup to do and it'll go quick and easy. So now if we zoom this out just a little bit, um, you can see again it's nice and clean in the background. Here's our before and here's our after. If you want to clean up any further or kind of blend things just a little bit further, again go back to that actual pixel layer there and get your clone stamp tool and just start uh, spreading it out and um, mixing it together. Again, the more shallow you shoot with your depth of field, the easier this process is going to be to remove things from the background, but there's the general idea of how it's done. Thanks so much for watching. You can learn more about my Photoshop actions and different photography related articles and how-to videos at my website, michellecamphotography.com. Thanks everyone and have a great day.